This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. This is the very first episode of a brand new series which will be running through the summer. This is the podcast Under the Stairs Horror Head to Head. Uh, idea that I concocted up, I'll be honest, during <laughs> a bit of a, a binge. Um, uh, there was a lot of alcohol involved and a couple of Excel sheets and because that's how I spend my time and I thought you know what would be cool um is you know getting a way to get people in to chat about movies by directors that are considered at the forefront of their game but you know they've got movies that suck and how do we ensure that there's an even spread of movies that are awesome and movies that suck so what I've done is I picked 10 horror directors that will be featured over the entirety of this five episode season. Um, each of those directors got two movies. I then grabbed a bunch of hosts who are joining me and then I randomized everything. So they randomly were selected a director and then randomly selected a movie from that director's back catalog that loosely fits the term horror. Um, we're gonna be doing this slightly differently to, we have, to anything else that we've actually done before in that this is gonna be a little bit more short form on the reviews but we're really going to open up the chance here to uh, get down and get deep with the reviews themselves. And then to add things, I've broken a cardinal rule. I've, I've implemented a scoring system that runs to 10. And we're going to review the movies based on the following criteria. Story, acting, effects, soundtrack and kills. And what we should have at the end of this is a more true representation of how we actually feel about these movies want well, to know what i mean well if you ask me on any given day what i would score the movie pieces i would say it's a five it's a bona fide five love that fucking movie if you were <laughs> asking me though to break down story acting effects soundtrack and kills turns out it wouldn't get the maximum over those in fact it would score pretty short on quite a lot of them so we're gonna actually be a little bit more academic about this Joining me on this episode, I have four phenomenal podcasters. Each of them have been selected a director and a movie. So joining me, I'm going to introduce Rims uh, in the order they will be reviewing on this episode. Uh, they're going to tell you who they are, and they're going to tell you what shows they do on the internet. Joining me first is uh, my good buddy, Bo Ransdell. Hi, Bo. Hi, how are you? I, I'm well, Bo. Please tell the listeners out there um, what podcast you do. Yeah, I do a podcast called The Dark Parade, mm. and uh, what, el what else do I do? Uh, that, <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff under that umbrella. Yes, so. it's, a, it's a broad church. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <Ten. laughs> yes, speaking of David Tennant series. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 much like yourself, I'm, I'm a fan of spreadsheets, so to, to give you an idea of what I'm doing, uh, recently I started uh, a, a recurring series on The Dark Parade called ranking of horrors where i am uh i'm ranking every horror movie that has ever been made <laughs> and we're we're through the first 40 so things are going well yeah sounds pretty insane i'll be honest um there's no getting around that it doesn't sound fun even with spreadsheets um, right, I am. Uh, I'm going to hand this over to the next person that you will hear on this episode doing a review. Um, it is JP. Hi, JP. Hey, Duncan and crew. Yep. Uh, JP, what show? What show are you representing? Um, Twenty Two Shots of Moods and Horror uh, is my main show. Ten years strong. I think. I think we actually started around 
a similar time that you did <laughs> yeah We're podcast under the stairs <laughs> um but uh actually i started a new show about six months ago that's been going really well called the sin bin mm. uh and it is s-y-n because it is a video podcast where we review vinegar syndrome releases and yeah, nice. uh every month we each of the hosts pick a new title that vinegar syndrome released and then we review the movie and the special features as well which is a little bit different from what uh most review shows do so that's mm-hmm. been going strong and it is a video show so if anybody wants to check that out we do it monthly uh it's six episodes deep and uh, yeah that's it. I, I really enjoy it. i think it's a fun show it's uh probably similar to some of the stuff that you've you do as well duncan with your different series <laughs> mm-hmm. no it's cool though man I'd, I'd love me some vinegar syndrome uh they are they are another like label that's like super cool and just really put out stuff that i'm like oh yeah that makes sense and then other things like i did not know that horror movie existed like at all i've never heard yeah of that you thing. get you get such a wide array of different types of movies from like the greatest horror films to like <laughs> movies with tiny tim starring as a killer clown <laughs> good times good times joining us after jp um is is the phenomenal lacy lou hi lacy hello everyone thank you for having me mr duncan it is a pleasure to have you here lacy what show you represent um, well, um, the main banner is Cut to the Chase, where I do it with Dan Chase. I mean, I do a lot of Dan Chase, but I'll just do it with that. <laughs> Easy, <man. laughs> um, But um, also under that banner, I have the last 20 podcast with uh, Carly Ray, And then I have um, Skip to Lou is where I do interviews by myself um, and drunken commentaries. Um, <laughs> a lot of full house shit. <laughs> And um, also the Slumber Party Massacre, um, who I do with three wonderful ladies, Rebecca Reinhardt, Carly Sonnefeld, and Heather Powell. And it's a three-act podcast where we do a girl talk topic, and then we have a theme um, for our pillow fight debate. Um, That's the second act. Um, We debate a bunch of different horror movies, kind of like what we do here, I guess. And then... um, we for the third act it's a feature presentation where we kind of review a film that kind of has gone with the theme of the episode so like our last episode out was bad daddies so we um <laughs> told stories about dads and um stories about dads and then we debated some bad daddies in horror and then we our feature review was the stepfather too so um it, it's a really great That's episode um if you haven't checked it out definitely check it out nice nice and then the last but not least joining me is uh, the phenomenal mark ball how's it going mark hello hi everybody it's good to be here it's great to have you here mark what show you represent uh i am duncan's co-host over on the <laughs> doing the nasty podcast which has been a little bit of a hiatus for a little while we still have a few more episodes of that because we don't want it show. to end ever see if we don't no. record those last three episodes the show will never end well, I've seen a few of the movies that are coming up on the last uh, couple episodes, so I'm I'm kind of cool with procrastinating as as long as humanly possible. <laughs> I, it also worked out too because I've wrote a, a college final paper about the video nasties like since the last time we recorded anything, basically. Mm. So I, I've acquired a lot of new knowledge and had to do a lot of research and shit for that paper before uh this is since since we recorded last but uh yeah we'll, we'll we'll get back to it i've been busy doing the music thing too i've been working on an album to get out before the end of the year and i joined a band and uh yeah shit's been shit's been crazy the show will be back pretty soon though i love how like in the time i've known you you've benjamin buttoned back like 20 years <laughs> <laughs> like how so <laughs> back to college started the band <laughs> i'm doing life backwards basically that's <laughs> just how it worked out <laughs> It's so good. Um, Right, Um, that is our hosts joining us. Now, to give you some detail here, we will have four movies. This is a bit of a weird one in that the randomizer drew the same director twice on this episode. So on this episode, you will get a review of The Hills Have Eyes remake uh, by Alexander Azure. Bo Ransdell is going to lead the charge on that. You are going to get a review of Rec 4, directed by Wami Balagero. Um, and then you're also going to get uh, a review of Rec, also by Wami Balagero, but also um, his, uh, his colleague. Uh, so, um, 
we're putting there anyway because he's not got a huge amount of movies. So we'll Paco Plaza, right? That's the one, Paco Plaza. Thank you very much. For some reason, I was going to go down a much more <laughs> generic, like kind of Spanish name, and I'm glad that you've saved me from what might be perceived as you know just apparent racism. So, um, <laughs> like, I'm glad you saved me there. Uh, and then Lacey Lou uh, will be leading the charge on Stoker, which is uh, the first movie that we're putting forward for part. Chan Wook. And um, this could be very simple. The the person assigned the movie is going to give you a, a roughly five minute either pro defense of or um, <laughs> a, a brutal takedown. And then we're going to look at their criteria scores for over story, acting, effects, soundtrack, and kills. Each of those are rated one through ten. And then uh, they're going to have to defend their points where people disagree from the remaining hosts and then we're going to continue rinse and repeat around all the movies until we get to the end at the end of this episode we will have ranked the movies one through four um and the results may may surprise you or may not it may be a case of that you get to the end, end of the episode and say this was a futile hour and a half um this is exactly how i thought it would land so uh leading the charge first and making his way to the 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 dock here for a little defense the podcast under the stairs calls one mr bo ransdell um who's coming to speak about the hills have eyes by alexander Aja. for a little bit of context on the movie it was released in 2006 um as a remake of the wes craven movie of the same name which was uh, based on the characters he wrote, but uh, co-written by Aja himself and Gregory Laz- Lavasseur. Uh, the DP for this one is Maxime Alexander, uh, who did a ton. He's actually still working quite heavily, but he appears to have done a lot of stuff with Aja in the past, but also some stuff with uh, a little guy called Flanagan. You may have heard of him. So he's done stuff like The Haunting of Blythe Manor. He's done Crawl, The Nun, Annabelle Creation, The Maniac Remake. Um, the score for this movie is done by Tom and Daddy, uh, who has done P2, The Strangers, The Monster, 47 Meters Down. The cast of this movie, Ted Levine. Uh, Ted Levine, Bo, can we get an impression, please? Is this that great big fat movie? Thank you. Uh, Kathleen Quinlan, uh, Daniel Bird. Uh, we've got Maxine Grifford, Michael B. Smith, Tom Bauer, Vanessa Shaw, uh, Robert Joy, Billy Drago, Greg Nicotero, and lots of other people. Synopsis for this one is a traveling family falls victim to a group of mutated cannibals in a desert far away from civilization. Uh, a little bit of trivia, because I love throwing these in. Uh, almost all of Ted Levine's actions and lines were improvised, because you don't give Ted Levine a fucking script. It's the rule on that one. Um, about two minutes of this movie were actually cut to achieve the R rating. And then the last one, because I feel close to home on this one, this movie and the original were inspired by the legend of Alexander Sonny Bean, the psychopath head of a Scottish clan that reportedly killed 1,000 people and fed their inbred brood. Bean and company would set booby traps for travellers and then attack. Eventually, disappearances drew the attention of King James VI, who would put an end to Bean's reign and massacred the entire family. Although some say the whole thing never happened and was a smear campaign by the British, many still believe in the Sony tale. So there we go. Scotland, full of uh, inbred cannibals, apparently. Um, <laughs> who would have thought it? Have you listened to the show? Um, Bo Ransdell, uh, the floor is yours uh, to present your case for or against The Hills Have Eyes. Well, thank you, Duncan ladies and gentlemen of the podcast uh look are we here to talk about horror movies or are we here to talk about horror movies uh because if we're talking about horror movies then you're talking about the hills have fucking eyes uh look this is a movie directed by uh new wave french horror directors like this is them coming off of high tension and not even the awful conclusion of that film <laughs> could deter Wes Craven. Oh yeah, I'll burn high tension on the same review. Um, not even. Objection. <laughs> Overruled. I'm with GP on this one. I'm almost I'm almost for striking striking both from the court. <laughs> look, look, a lot look, a lot of this review is about lying to yourself, okay? And if you want to lie to yourself and say that the end of high tension makes a whole lot of sense and that helps you sleep at night, go with God. But Wes Craven, nonetheless, Wes Craven saw that movie, which is great up to a point, 
and and said, you know what? I've been thinking about remaking Hills Have Eyes, and these are just the French weirdos to do it. Mm. Uh, as as Duncan alluded to, uh, it's got a murderer's row of character actors in the cast, mm-hmm. uh, mostly in the roles of of our you know cannibalistic mut- mutants. Uh, but also, you know, Ted Levine, you got your, uh, your, your gas station owner, fairly scaled back movie. Um, much like the original, uh, a a very pointed critique of the effects of radiation, maybe a little too on the nose. I'll admit that. Mm -hmm. But when this movie decides to get raw, it gets raw. And thanks to some incredible effects from K and B. Uh, who are kind of at the height of their powers mm-hmm. uh, during the filming of this movie. Uh, I mean, they do some really gnarly effects work, whether it's the mutations themselves, uh, whether it's it's some of the kills, which are also very, very good. Um, yeah, and there's actually a good blend of CGI. There's uh, a little bit, even with the Ruby character, there's a little bit of a, a CGI uh, sweetening to go along with the practical effects and I think this is a great example of how CGI and practical effects really do work hand in glove and can uh, kind of sell an illusion even better um, so yeah there's a lot to recommend Hills Have Eyes it, it's tense, it's bloody um, look uh, one thing we should all uh, admit is that the music is terrible um <laughs> It did not. Uh, this movie did not emerge from the mid two thousand. Objection. Yeah, yeah. This is Tom and Andy. The score, right? Yeah, yeah. It's miserable mm. uh, new metal garbage. <laughs> You're wrong. And it does the film okay. no favors. <laughs> but, but look, hey, if I don't have to sell you on on the soundtrack, the rest of this is easy, right? Because. Uh, yeah, the the story's maybe not so great. It's 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 a remake. Nothing really surprising about any of this. Uh, but what it sets out to do, it does very very well, uh, and and better than most of these like mid two thousands remakes. Better than Chainsaw Massacre. Better than Amityville Horror. Like one might argue, one of the few uh, horror remakes to surpass the original. And a lot of people are like, yeah, but that was kind of you know the analog. Mm-hmm. Uh, the real shit uh, and this is where we get to lying to yourselves again because uh, uh, Hills Have Eyes is, is a great idea um, executed like it was shot in somebody's backyard so mm, if I were going to watch one or the other which am I going to watch? Probably the remake right? Mm. Uh, so uh, there you have it uh, ladies and gentlemen suck on it <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you know what's great. I was like, at like either for or against. By the end of Bo's review, I'm not sure where we sit. Uh, he's put forward just as many pros as he has cons. But he did say at the end he would watch this over the original, which I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards him being on the more optimistic side. Uh, Bo Ransdell, do you have your scoring for um, this movie in front of you? I do indeed. Right. Um, in the story category, what did you give it out of ten? I gave it a seven. And the acting, what did you give it? Also a seven. And the effects, what did you give it? Oh, I mean, this is a solid nine. Excellent. And the the soundtrack that you loved, um, what did you give it? Uh, A five. There's a collective wince running through the podcast here. Um, (laughs) The kills, you gave it? Also a nine. I mean, the the effects and the kills are what what makes this movie kind of remarkable and special. Perfecto. Which means I can tell you, Borans, though, that of the maximum of 50 points you could have given this movie, you gave it 37. Mm-hmm. So um, I am now going to open the floor up because I, I could feel there was some dissent in tones. Now I'm just going to stress that this is on the Hills of Eyes and not Bo's shockingly wrong um, feelings on high tension, which, I mean, for shame, Bo. Um, <laughs> But we are going to hand it in order to the reviewers. So JP is up first. JP, I mean, you've heard Bo's views. Uh, is there anything you take umbrage with? Anything that you want to say? Actually, Bo, you nailed that. You got it right. The floor is yours. Honestly, pretty good overall. Uh, I I, I actually really love the Hills Have Eyes remake. Every time I go to watch it, 
I always think that it's going to like decline due to mm. like time that has passed or whatever. And then I always step away like, damn, that is just a solid horror movie. It's it's it takes a film that was very gritty. Um, and I do love the original for its grittiness, but it kind of like smooths out some of the rough edges of the original uh, and makes it more of like a coherent piece. Um, I think the soundtrack is much better than <laughs> than he gave credit for. So. <laughs> I would argue that he was, uh, you know, he should have been more favorable on. You could just see it wrong if you want. Uh, <laughs> like, you will take it on the chin. <laughs> um, I, I think that the acting is maybe uh, more strong too. Um, I think that everybody knows like what character they're playing, and they they kind of kill it with it. Uh, from the the father character being like such a, uh, you know, just quintessential like ex-cop dad who doesn't respect the you know tech driven uh office you know son-in-law to the the brother and sister and every i I think everybody does such a good job in the movie and including the mutants um ruby's good so the acting i think is really really up there and yeah as although the um nuclear effects and stuff are a little more on the nose than than the than the original film i do think it gets a good point across the opening uh sort of like title sequence with like the the test mm. footage and all that i think that really does a an effective job of like putting in perspective uh the sins of our our past and stuff with with nuclear uh bombs and and different stuff like that radiation and stuff but yeah i, I mean overall I, I pretty much more so agree with everything besides those two things and the fact that high tensions ending is perfect thank you thank you jp um like let's talk about your scoring for this one overall what did you give the story i gave it an eight and i do think it's almost perfect for what it is besides being on the nose the only knock is that it is like a rehash of something that already existed yeah um, I, I think that's always one of those things you have to keep in mind when it comes to a remake. Um, did they change something that maybe was a detriment, or did they actually manage to take a story that is, you know, decades old, but actually manage to keep it? Like, because audience have seen a ton of movies now that have been inspired by The Hills of Eyes by two thousand and six. Mm-hmm. So, d- does it manage to hold up? So, you gave it one more than than Bo did on the story and the acting. What did you give it? I gave it a nine. So two above what Bo gave it. Um, and the effects. Nine which is spot on what Bo said, um, and the soundtrack? Eight. Yeah, it's a little bit more than Bo. Um, <laughs> and then the kills? Eight. Yeah, so one less than Bo. Overall, you gave this movie, out of 50 maximum points, you could have given it a 42. Thank you very much, JP. Handing over to Lacey Lou. Lacey, anything from that has been mentioned thus far that you might disagree with? I can see your scores. I can imagine there's quite a few. Um, <laughs> so the floor is yours. Um, I'm easy to please, and um, this is just one of those movies. Um, it's actual, like, like if you haven't seen the original, this film is, mm. like, such a gut punch. Um, mm-hmm. You know, with what happens to this family, it's so fucked up. Like, the dog, man, ugh, like, it breaks my <laughs> heart. Like, I hate that shit, but it just makes that movie so much more effective. Um, you know, with what happens to the girls in the trailer with, you know, and then the baby and the poor little parakeet bird, like, oh my God, the animals, like poor, you know, Ted Levine who gets burned alive. Like it's, it, it's so <laughs> like, it's so dramatic and so tragic and like, it's, it's just really good. <laughs> and, um, what I really love about this is you see the journey of the character of the son-in-law and we have an epic final guy in Doug and Mm. um yeah he has a great arc I I forgot to mention that he goes from sort of like this quote-unquote pussy to the hero a total badass who's rescuing his daughter and you know his uh siblings-in-laws and it's I don't know it's just kind of like you get a great final guy which you can't really say that about a lot of other like horror movies like Mm -hmm. Um, breaking it down like he is definitely one of the top final guys of all time in my opinion um next to like paxton if you don't count hostile too because you know his fate there but um they kind of <laughs> have like a similar arc you know where you don't necessarily have to go do these things like you're like you can get away at this point but you kind of have like they just man up and 
do what they need to do to get the job done. Um, the score bow is <laughs> The score and slash soundtrack. Um, some of these movies don't even have a score or a soundtrack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, this one, like when I think, when I hear California Dreaming or whatever the fucking song's name is called, I instantly think of this movie every time I hear it. I know that song is like outplayed and in a lot of other fucking movies too, but this is the one that I think of. And the fact that, you know, when Doug's going to the gas station, he's just singing it himself. Like, I love that. I don't know. Just nice little touches like that. And as JP mentioned, like at the beginning, um, you get that sound of like the nuclear sound going off and it just sets the tone for the entire movie. Like you just know um, that shit's going down. It's going down for real. Um, yeah. And I love that like Ruby, she was like, even though she was like an inbred, um, like, was she inbred or was she just damaged by the <laughs> nuclear shit? Uh, a little of both, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, so, but I mean, I love that she's like an innocent. She's trying to help this family and, you know, she sacrifices herself for them. And I don't know, this movie's like a gut punch. It, it, like, it yeah. deserves more credit. That's, that's how I feel. I th and I think it's an elevated remake. Like, some of the other ones take too much liberties where this one was able to just elevate what that first original film was and in my opinion did it better very nice very nice so let's talk about your scores for this movie here what did you give it in the story i gave it a fucking 10 you give it a 10 in the story which is uh three higher than both um and the acting what did you give it i gave it a fucking 10 <laughs> which is three higher than both and the effects what did you give it Gave it a fucking 10. Look at fucking yeah, Ruby's I'm, fucking see, face. I'm starting to see a pattern in here. You give it one above Bo. Um, and the sim track? Um, like I said, it sets the tone from the very beginning <laughs> to the final frame. It's a fucking 10. Right, that's five above Bo. And lastly, uh, kills. Oh, man. Like, hello. Like, when he fucking kills oh. Nicotero. Fucking 10. Right, so out of the potential 50 points... God damn! One, you gave this one a maximum mark of 50. So, there you go. I um, <laughs> <laughs> lastly, we're turning to Mark Ball. Mark, anything that you want to query on that has been mentioned by Ball's review, um, either for or against? Uh, I'm a... I, I'm a sucker for these the the music in a lot of these movies around this era the 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 Tom and Andy's and the Tyler Bates's and stuff I I, I dig it I, I think it fits these kind of movies like I was like 19 or 20 when this came out mm. and yeah the early 2000s are just littered with all these like fairly nasty like mean spirited and kind of ugly little fucking horror movies and uh, this one th this one's a cut above like, like like everyone mentioned the the effects work in this is amazing this is gloriously fucking violent like super uh, pushing I'm pushing the limits of what you could get away with in an R-rated movie at the time uh, I, I I gave this one slightly lower marks in the <laughs> acting in the story departments uh, I, all of the actors in this movie are all fucking great actors I think the script is just not there's a lot of stuff at the beginning of this movie where I'm just like oh come on fucking just get up and go and do something like uh, if, I, I think that's I, a lot of the dialogue is something that I wish they had kind of changed because it, it's pretty close to the original, which uh, also is just like corny and kind of wooden and not <laughs> it's it's not doing the actors like much of a service, which is unfortunate because there's some fucking great actors in this. And like really, when you kind of strip away like the uh, like, like the, the, I, I, I like the final act of this where we get kind of the atomic element to it. I think it fits. I just don't really, it doesn't have that much of a, an effect on me all these years later, I guess. I, I, I like it a lot, like in terms of like an expansion to the story mm -hmm. kind of from the original, but um, yeah, the, the story in this is based on like these, these characters are like kind of a step above like slasher movie characters. Like they're really mm -hmm. kind of just there to like we get them in this situation so that the like last two thirds of this can just be carnage and fucking mayhem basically, which is fine. Like this, sometimes a movie doesn't need to be more than that. And this one certainly doesn't like we're, we're not here, you know, because these are super compelling characters or anything. We're, we're here to, we're here to go for the ride. 
kind of. So you know, that, that's kind of where my scores are a little bit. I'm, I'm still pretty close to how Bo scored this, but you're a little, not that far off. Not yeah, not that far, not that far off. off. Let's let's go through your scores then. What did you get for story? Story, I gave this a six. It's it's right. fine. Yep, so one below what Bo gave it. On acting, what did you give it? Acting, again, six. It's fine. It's not great. That's one below what Bo gave it. Um, and effects, what did you give it? Effects, this is a nine. This is a highlight of the time. Yeah, you are like nailing pretty much the, the consensus on this. On soundtrack? Uh, a guilty pleasure, eight. Yep, um, that's uh, three above what Bo gave it. And then lastly, in kills? And kills is a nine. They're fucking great. Boom, there you go. So out of the potential 50 points, you gave it 38, which means I can see that on overall scorings for this one, Lacey scored this movie the highest with the maximum of 50. Um, It was then JP who gave it 42. Mark then gave it 38, which means that Bo gave it 37, which was the lowest grade for the movie overall. Um, Thank you very much, Bo. You can now step down from... Anything you want to say to your your colleagues before you step down that is uh, broadcastable? (laughs) <laughs> uh yeah i i think we're all kind of on the same boat mm. I, I don't think these scores are all that wildly different um and you know <laughs> that, like ted levine getting set on fire is awesome and if you haven't seen <laughs> the hills have eyes from 2006 watch it for that alone because that like you can see how the the gag works yeah but that doesn't make it any less cool Mm. It's like, oh, that's a puppet that looks just like Ted Levine. That's on fucking fire. That's great. They, they set Buffalo Bill on fire. God damn uh-huh, it. Yeah. They were like, was that about a size four fire extinguisher? I <laughs> 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 can't even know what we're doing here now. Um, right, thank you very much, Bo. You're excused. <clears throat> right. Um, next um and the docket the podcast under the stairs um summons one mr jp who is representing whammy balaguero uh, who has directed the movie rec 4 for some details on this movie it came out in 2014 it's the final part of the quadrology uh, he co-wrote it with manny diaz um and the dp for this one is pablo rosso who direct um, the dp work for all the rec movies and has pretty much worked with paco plaza and uh, Whammy all the way through their career. He's done movies like Veronica and Sleep Tight. Uh, the score for this one is done by a guy called Arno Battler, I think is how you pronounce his name. Uh, he's done loads of TV um, and most recently had a movie called Killer Book Club, which is available on Netflix. He did the score for that as well. Uh, this movie stars a lot of people, which is just going to make me sound awful, uh, with Spanish names. Um, the, I suppose the more important one is Manuela Velasco, who is reprising her role back here again. But we've got Paco Manzandio, <laughs> Hector Colomi. Oh, Why did I do this to unbearable. myself? Uh, but you're off the stand, Ransdell. Um, Christian Aquilino, uh, Paco Obregón. <laughs> Obregón. <laughs> Obregón. Uh, Javier Ladorn. Um, and some other people that have Spanish names. I apologize to any Spanish listeners uh, listening to the show right now. Please stick with us. Um, the synopsis for this one is, uh, an ill-fated television reporter is rescued and sent on a voyage across the ocean, but she's followed by a deadly virus that has plagued her and numerous others. A little bit of trivia for this one. If you watch Wreck, Wreck 2, and this film back-to-back without watching the end credits, the three movies would play as one entire sequence of events. Um, this is the only installment of the franchise that was not filmed at all using found footage. Um, all the others either have an element of found footage or are found footage movies. Um, and writer-director Wami Balero and his work partner Paco Plaza have announced that there will not be a fifth installment to the series, even though this film was left open-ended. JP... You are here to either um, represent this movie positively or negatively. The floor is now yours. So I was going to come in here and just lie my heart out and try to sell this movie, but I, look at what I'm up against, bro. Like, <laughs> this was... I, I got definitely the worst one. In was the this a first-time watch for you? No, I've, I've seen it. That? I've seen oh, it you've before. you've seen it before, right. Yeah, yeah so a uh, pretty big fan of the, the first two Wreck films, and I even like the third one, Genesis, a little bit more than Part 4. Now, I will say, re-watching Wreck 4, Apocalypse, I did find it to be a little better than I had previously thought. 
Mm -hmm. I do like what, them continuing the story, even though they they kind of like go back to like the more infected thing versus like the end of the first film and the, yeah. then the second film, like how that the story seemed to be progressing. Um, but I and I do like uh, what is her name? Angela is that her yeah, name? Yeah, Angela. Yeah, yeah. I do like her. She was great in the first one, but this one this is like a prime example of a, of a sequel that just it exists just to you know capitalize on the fact that it's a popular franchise there really wasn't much added to to the film series mm -hmm. and i really didn't like them stepping away from the found footage i almost feel like it was more out of like it's just easier to make a a, a regular movie than a found footage film mm -hmm. it takes less, less effort to you know because everything has to be so choreographed with the found footage I would have liked it to be found footage, especially since there's so many damn cameras in the boat, right? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you could have just went for the found footage. Um, I do like the isolated setting of the boat, and I do think that this film could have had an opportunity to be a great wreck film had it been found footage, and they really sort of capitalized on what made the first two films successful, which is the isolation, which is the close quarters, um, and the, you know, the quarantined effect of it, which you know is essentially perfect for a boat setting right mm -hmm. um but yeah I, overall I, I mean i was <laughs> like how the hell am i going to talk about rec four for five minutes <laughs> um i thought that the the uh the infected or possessed whatever you want to call it looked looked pretty good throughout uh some of the characters feel very generic mm. um generic bad guy generic you know funny uh nerd who knows computer stuff you know um but i don't know it's it's no, it's it's not gonna win any any awards dude it's it's the worst of the four but i i, I did think it was better than i remembered yeah it's one of, it's one of those ones that i i do think that there's a part of it let less i think actually the directors themselves just moved away from doing film footage altogether. It's almost like that. This is a vehicle now to set up her career, and we just don't. Like the same way, like someone like Eduardo Sanchez hasn't really mm. just continued doing tons. Of, like once, once I've got their foot in the door, like yeah, we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, um, and I totally get it from their perspective. Like I wouldn't feel like doing another found footage, you know. Yeah. So but I'm I, with I you. It should like the setting of this uh, with all the security cameras. That is like the is a more a reason to do found footage than any of the other movies. <laughs> right. um, it's like it's, it's primed for it. So it's almost as if they've just decided, like, nah, <laughs> like, <laughs> we won't, fuck you. We won't do what you tell us. Um, let's talk scores for this one then. Uh, what did you give the story for this movie? I uh, gave it a generous seven. You did indeed. Um, acting? Uh, a generous seven as well. You did. Uh, effects? Uh, seven and a half. You did give it a seven and a half. Soundtrack? Uh, it's a very generic soundtrack, but I gave it a seven. <laughs> it works. It works for the movie, but it is. Cool. It, it feels like it's just, you know, uh, stock music. <laughs> You do get a, get the feeling that the the guy that did the score for this one was just kind of lying about his house, uh, you know. It was like, yeah, you just use it. Um, and kills for this one. What did you get? Six point five. You did indeed. Which means, which means, out of a total of fifty points that you could have given this movie, the total you gave it was thirty five. Um, thank you very much, GP. Now we're going to open up to uh, a little round table here to find out if uh, there's any people that disagree with you uh, or agree with you. Um, we're starting with Bo Ransdell. Bo, um, you've heard how they spoke about you earlier on. I'm sure you're not going to hold that maliciously against these hosts as you now critique them. But um, what, what did you think of uh, JP's opinions of the movie overall? Yeah, I, I'm mostly uh, find myself in line with his thoughts on it. I, I find Rec 4 to be dreadfully mediocre. Mm. Um I, I don't think there there is anything really that special about it other than some stuff that I think is uniquely kind of bad like uh, like the 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 bad CGI zombie monkeys chasing her but but there's also that scene where they should be there and you just hear them and you're like oh you guys ran out of money on that <laughs> you you didn't have zombie monkey money left fly um, my pretties fly <laughs> But only, only to the doorway. Don't <laughs> fly, uh, you know, just 
Glad, glad, my pretty. <laughs> Do it behind the door, and we'll put the sound yeah. effects in. <laughs> and they became Elvis puppet monkeys. Shoot them from the waist up. Yeah, yeah. So like that kind of stuff is is bad, and it's kind of an unfortunate ending to a series that I mostly like. Mm. And and so on that level, there's sort of that emotional, uh, like I'm rooting for Rec Four in a lot of ways because I like the Rec films overall. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you get to Rec Four, and it was interesting because going uh, going back and rewatching the entire series recently, I would have told you prior to that that Rec Three was the worst one mm. because it is so far afield of the rest of the series. And then rewatching again, I was like, oh, no, it actually has some interesting stuff mm -hmm. in it. And Rec 4 feels like a really by the numbers way to wrap up this franchise. And it felt like this deserved a little bit more than by the numbers, you mm -hmm. know? Like, I, I love seeing Angela, uh, like, run around and have her adventures. But I just feel like you dick around way too much with the, like, is she possessed? Isn't she possessed? Like, who gives a fuck? Let's just get to the wreck part of the wreck movie. <laughs> you know, I do like, I, I like the fat radio guy, Nick. I like him. Do you? Yeah, he's fine. Why? I think I relate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I think, I, I think I'm that kind of like cowardly schlub at heart. I just kept oh, feeling like he fucked. should be Jack Black or something. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, like, you know. Joaquin Black. Um. <laughs> right, right, right. But let's uh, let's talk about your scores here. What did you give it in the story? Uh, a six. Yeah, that's one lower than JP, so not far off. And the acting? A seven. Which is the same as what JP gave it. And the effects? Six. Is 1.5 lower. And the soundtrack? A five. You just hate soundtracks, Paul. <laughs> I, no, I love soundtracks. I think this is a super generic soundtrack. This is true. Um, and in the kills? A six. That's a point five lower than JP, which means of the 50 points this movie could have scored from you, you gave it 30. Um, let's continue over. Lacey Lou, this was a first time watch for you, as was the other rape movie we're going to discuss. Uh, how did you get on with this one? Um. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, they were both first time watches. Um... I, I I did find this one just a little more palatable because I'm just at that stage in my life where found footage is just a little yeah. played out and zombies and all of that. Um, I haven't seen a really good found footage movie in a while. And I know that, you know, Wreck came out like a long time ago. 2007, now. <laughs> yeah. So it yeah. was like on the 17 years out. ago. Oh, like, yeah, so, 17 years ago, the same fact the year before Paranormal Activity technically so but i love paranormal activity so it's weird that it, like yeah but um yeah i'm just did you see a... paranormal activity when paranormal activity came out i did i did so yeah. it was fresh so. yes yes um this however <laughs> um I, I um i'm just not a motherfucking fan. 10 <laughs> it's not a motherfucking 10 but um <laughs> like i keep in mind when i sent you my scores like i don't like ever partake in like THC or cannabis usually, but um, I did have a um, cannabis infused drink. I, I really don't. I, I honestly don't. I'm, I'm usually a drinker, but I'm like so. Um, I had a cannabis infused drink while I rated this movie. So, oh, yeah. um, so uh, <laughs> my scores on on these might surprise some of you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So as I and I was also having the cannabis infused drink while I watched this film. So mm. when I seen a bad CGI monkey, I was stoned and into it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Hell like, yeah. It, it, it Hell made yeah. it more entertaining for me. And like when the cooks in the kitchen, I'm like, oh, we're gonna order BK because this dude's cooking. <laughs> you know. So. <laughs> so so it in, it inspired me to order fast food. Um, but, um, ten, so, ten stars. How is it not a ten? Yeah. So there's something. Um, I thought I stoned and I got fast food. Ten stars. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, well, I mean, I, I thought I was ha gonna have to be something because 
we'll get into the first one later, but um, I, mm -hmm. I needed something to enhance this experience for me. And so I was glad to see that it actually wasn't found footage. I, I thought it was a different um, direction to take, which I thought was mm. cool and ambitious. Um, obviously found footage is a lot cheaper to shoot, honestly, um, than to make a movie like this. Um, so that can obviously either work or against for you. For mm -hmm. me, it worked. I preferred to watch it at this moment in time in my life, you know? Um, yep. but I did think it was cool that because I had only watched one and four, um, that I'm assuming that this bitch was just missing between two and three, so um, I do. <laughs> well, part, part three technically is uh, is set about this. In fact, set at the same time as part one. Oh, okay. So um, just a different location. So. Yeah, so I, I just assumed that she had just been hanging out in like this <laughs> quarantine department this entire time. Like, I hey mean, guys. obviously she's like older. Like, I don't know how much time has passed. Like, I was stoned and missed that. But, um, so, um, but I did, I, I did um, semi-enjoy this movie for what it was. Um, it was a bit, um, I was like, ah, you know what? I bet you they saved the old lady. They didn't save the old lady. <laughs> All of my predictions were fucking wrong. And, like, so. Oh, um, my, my new favorite thing is, like, under the umbrella of Cut the Chase, I now want Lacey Stone reviews. <laughs> Where you pair them, you you pair the movie up with what you're drinking and what fast food you've ordered, um, <laughs> so it can go wildly bad. I got um, a whopper. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's talk about your scoring then, and let's see if it actually is all that different from what we've heard already. Then, um, what did you give the story? Oh man, hang on. Um, I gave it an eight. <laughs> Which is oh, right, but so that's only one above what JP gave it in the acting. Um, I thought it was a vast improvement from the original, so I gave it an eight. Good lord. Which is only one <laughs> above what GP gave it. Old lady is um, so convincing. Um, <laughs> and, and the effects? The old lady's from part three, I believe, right? Um, when the yeah. dude gets stabbed in the fucking neck with the syringe and it like works in the adverse effect of what they had wanted in his face fucking bubbles, I thought that was yeah. cool too. So I gave it an eight. <laughs> I was high. Which is only, alone. It's, it's only 0. 0.5 above what GP gave it. And the soundtrack, what did you give it? Um, I gave it an 8 because, like... Because weed. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, that's oh, only no, one because, above what GP gave it. Well, no, because, like, it did something different than the first film did, so... Yeah, which didn't as in, have any like, I, I, as, in, as in gave it a soundtrack. <laughs> um, and, uh, and the kills, what did you give it? I liked the bad monkey. <laughs> <laughs> like, for that, I, to be fair, I don't think the monkey's that bad. I've seen way worse. I, I like it. Reminds me of when my little dog is like attacking me to go outside. So like, I'm like oh, <laughs> monkey. and I mean, this movie has a fucking monkey getting fried in a goddamn frying pan. This gets a ten. <laughs> the motherfucking ten, <laughs> uh, which is. Point, uh, 3.5 above what uh, JP <laughs> gave this one. Out of a possible 50, you gave this movie 42. That That's um, really high now. <laughs> 12, <laughs> so were you. <laughs> 12 points above what the low score um, is. But actually, no, it's 7 above what JP gave it. Um, Mark Ball, final thoughts um, mm. and uh, anything that you want to uh, query, contest, or agree with from JP's review of Rick Ford. I, I think I'm thereabouts with the rest of the crew here. Uh, this movie is decidedly okay. Like, uh, I, I watched this immediately after watching the first one. Uh, I had never seen part four before. This was the first time watching that one. And I hadn't seen the first one in many, many years. Uh, the, it's weird to think, like, it... it so I, this is this is a bad wreck movie. This is the worst of the wreck movies for sure. Uh, if this was just like zombies on a boat or something, it, it would be okay, but very I'm very sick of these forgettable. Motherfucking zombies! Oh my motherfucking! Zombies. <laughs> so what this movie needed was yeah. it was a Sam Jackson throwed around some uh, some Honestly, bombs, and Nick was right that. there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this, this this was extremely forgettable. Like this was kind of like this is nowhere near as good as the first two movies. And like, I, I think like it made me realize that the, uh, I think the found footage aspect is a lot of the charm and a lot of why mm. the first one works. If you did, 
if you did the first movie in this style, like just as a movie, it would, I don't think it would be nearly as good. And it would be like, it's, it's, I, whoever said it's painfully mediocre, basically. And uh, I'm looking at my scores for this thing, and I I definitely think I was uh, consuming a little bit of the, the THC also because I scored this thing a little higher than I probably would have. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about your scoring then. Let's see how far off you are from the consensus. Um, what did you give the story? Story, I gave this a six. Really, that right. should be more like a four or something. Right, that's no, listen, that's the same as what Bo gave it, and <laughs> one below what um, JP gave it. And two below police he gave it. So it's not hugely out. Um, and the acting, what did you give it? The acting is a six. It's fine. Some of the writing is atrocious, but uh, yeah. So nobody's, low score nobody's that's awful. been given to acting across the board here for <laughs> like so. <laughs> like, uh, so it's one below JP. Um, effects? Effects I gave a seven. There's there's some decent effects in this. Like the effects weren't really a problem. The, the, honestly, the monkeys didn't bother me that much either. Like I was honestly like about half asleep by the time they came around in this movie. So <laughs> this might be the first movie I think I've done a review of where Bo has like scored a monkey scene lower than anyone else. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Look, what does that tell you? About how bad. <laughs> a monkey but, in a movie, Bo will almost give it a five. Like, it, like straight away at a five. <laughs> But it, no. keep in mind what my critique is. Yes. There are bad CGI zombie m- monkeys. Yeah. And then they just kind of disappear. Yeah. Like, you just wanted the whole movie to be bad CGI monkey zombies. I mean, if that's what we're doing, then just... <laughs> and, and, like, yeah, like somebody else said, like, just turn the whole movie into, hey, we got to survive this zombie boat full of, m- monkeys. you know, <laughs> undead monkeys. And now you Zombie monkeys on a boat movie. with Sam Jackson. Right. I'm sick of these Dude, yeah, I mean, zombies. Give this guy monkeys. a job in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, so you gave it a, for effects, Mark, you gave it a? Uh, a seven. They're, they're, yeah, they're so five. it's 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5 below GP. Um, Sim track? A soundtrack, I gave a seven, which is way too high. At most, it's a, it's a five. <laughs> I know, I feel it's that way Generic and too. very, very <laughs> forgettable. I don't know why I gave this a seven. That's the same as GP. And for kills? Uh, kills is a seven. They're, they're, they're some all right ones. They're, there's some decent gore in this. Right, so that's only a point five above. So you're not wildly off the eh, consensus. They're here. thereabouts. Yeah. So the highest score for Rec Four came from Lacey Lou, um, who gave it a forty-two out of fifty. Um, the lowest uh, is Bo Ransdell again, who gave it thirty out of fifty. And then in the middle, uh, second to top was JP, and then it was Mark with 35 and 33 respectively um jp thank you very much for your time if you'd like to step down now and we will call our next uh next representative here thank you right uh, stepping up to the docket um representing the movie stoker by director park chan Wook. the podcast under the stairs calls one lacy lu um for details on this movie it came out in 2013 um this like blew my mind when i read this today uh the the screenplay for this is written by wentworth, wentworth miller. miller yep the i did from know that prison break <laughs> yep i because like, whenever this movie came out i i saw that i was like is that the, that's not the dude from prison break is it <laughs> and sure enough it was and i was like that is so random it's yeah, so bizarre nuts. and this is like his first script he ever wrote um and i mean i guess everybody's Park got one in him you know <laughs> he's done two movies uh the other one was that was it the disappointments room or the disappointments game or whatever that movie was from a couple of years ago which was wait for it, a disappointment um <laughs> not as good That's um the Kate beckinsale something like that yeah like, that a lot great. of like generic who gives a fuck um <laughs> like the the dp in this uh, is a uh, chung hoon chung um who is a fucking powerhouse dp um he's worked like almost exclusively with the uh, park chan work in the past doing things like old boy lady vengeance and thirst uh, but that doesn't mean he hasn't done some hollywood entries as well he was the dp for the remake of it and more recently last night in soho um, the score for this one is by motherfucking Clint Mansell. Oh my god. He's bringing in the, the, the big old guns here. Uh, Clint Mansell has done a ton of stuff with Ben Beatley and Darren Aronofsky, including the scores for things like Black Swan, uh, High Rise, and more recently, he worked with Rose Glass on Love Lies Bleeding. Uh, the cast, uh, Mia Wasikowska, um, uh, Wasikowska, 
Waz Mia is in this movie. Uh, Nicole Kidman, <laughs> Matthew Good, Dermot Mulroney, stop laughing at me. David Alford, Phyllis Summerfield, Harmony Corrin, Lucas Till, uh, Jackie Weaver, some other folks. Synopsis is, after India's father dies, her uncle Charlie, who she never knew existed, comes to live with her and her unstable mother. She comes to suspect this mysterious, charming man has an ulterior motive and becomes increasingly infatuated with him. Uh, some trivia for this one here. Wentworth Miller's screenplay was heavily influenced, and this is by him, uh, he said this, by Alfred Hitchcock's Shadow of a Doubt from 1943. Uh, Park Chan-wook appreciated Mia Wasikowska's former ballet training as it ensured she slotted perfectly into cool, linear imagery of the film. Mia's posture, as he would go on to say, her stillness and her straightness speaks to the personality of the character who likes everything ordered around her. Man, that that makes a lot of sense. Hundred <laughs> oh, percent, like when damn, you, you like fucking nailed that. Yeah, um, I don't like listen to this. Uh, so thirty minutes of footage was actually edited out of the final cut of this movie, which does make me wonder if we ever will see that. Um, but it's not uncommon for a Park Chan Wook movie, um, especially in the early days. It was tends to be quite a lot cut out of his movie and also speaks to the fact that this is his only US film which um, he did not have a great time with um, so if Old Boy from 2003 um, depicts the Oedipus complex and this film depicts the Electra complex which is the inverse of that very thing so if you want to get all Freudian uh, like go for it <laughs> you want to unpack that shit um, Nicole Kidman originally turned down the role of Evelyn because she just wrapped up filming The Paperboy from 2012 and wished to spend more time with her husband and kids but director Park chan was so eager to have her in this film that he chose to place the setting just five minutes from her home in Nashville Bo, Nashville um, <laughs> which allowed her Represent. to begin filming um, and lastly uh, Colin Firth James Franco, now imagine any of these, um, now that you've <laughs> no, seen the movie. No. Colin Firth, James Franco, Joel Egerton, and Michael Fassbender were originally considered for the role of Uncle Charlie. Firth was originally cast, but he was dro- He then dropped out and was replaced by Matthew. Good. So this could have been a wildly different movie. Could have had Colin Firth in it. Um, oh, James Franco, man. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I could no. see Fassbender. That would be interesting. Fassbender would know, be okay. like like would be very very tight um, in the role. Uh, I don't think he would have necessarily the full on charm of Matthew Good, but we'll we'll get to that. There's a scene here with a piano where I almost I almost orgasmed. So <laughs> like, like just watching it. So uh, God knows what was happening in that room. Uh, Lacey Lou, you. <laughs> Lazy Lee, you'd never seen this movie before. I was very excited because I'm always excited for people to check out this movie because I felt like I was one of the few people talking about it when it came out. Um, but that doesn't always mean much of anything because in the past, me and you have been like chalk and cheese, um, like <laughs> oil and water, like other things that are apart. And then our times we merge up. I'm curious to see where you landed, even though I can see your score, so I know where we landed. But uh, Lacey Lou, the floor is yours um, with your either defense are the cries of Stoker. Well, I actually wrote out my opener for this courtroom setting, but so you're going to hear some of the shit you already just heard. So bear with me. <laughs> apologies. Apologies. <laughs> no, I, I just didn't know the format. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was high. Hello. All right. <laughs> writing this at like midnight (laughs) as i'm saying good morning um good morning listeners and co-hosts of this podcast under the stairs today i'm here to talk to you about park chan walks stoker written by wentworth miller which is a bit (laughs) mind-blowing as he played prison (laughs) artist michael schofield on prison break did anyone else know that i didn't know that I, i know if that doesn't have your attention, should I present the cast? Mia Wasikowska. Uh, she was notably in Crimson Peak and also played Alice in the live adaptation of Alice in Wonderland. Does Nicole Kidman even fucking need an introduction? <laughs> Please tell me you wrote that. I, I did. <laughs> Dermot Maroney. So many titles as well. But as most recently... Scream six. So I was I- wondering if we were going to get a scream <laughs> reference in this. Well, well played. 
So obviously, having a scream alum makes this movie that much better already. <laughs> he's in. He's in four minutes of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucking pin. And- That's at least worth two points, right? <laughs> it really is. And to round it out, Matthew Good, who played Father slash Dracula and Abigail, I think he's Dracula. I don't. I was confused on that. I've only watched that once. But anyways, now please focus your attention. On the plot of this film, a girl loses her father and suddenly her creepy ass uncle comes to stay with her and her mother. Creepy to some, charming to others. (laughs) Yes, as he's riding his horse next to the school. It's like it's like a kind of dating. It's like a, a like a Tinder version of Hellraiser. <laughs> Creepy is some charming to others. Swipe left or swipe right. You decide. <laughs> Anywho, there's a movie somewhere in that. But we'll get that written down. <laughs> Tinder Hellraiser. Tinder Razor. There we go. Or Hell- Hellraiser Gumshot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, Lacey. All right. <laughs> the the film gets stranger as the movie goes on. The uncle just starts murking people with his belt. <laughs> and has with, quite with the his epic, brother's belt, technically. <laughs> with his belt and has quite the epic kill while snapping young Han Solo's neck. <laughs> That's a Star Wars reference. <laughs> I, should, I think good job writing this all down. <laughs> <laughs> the movie has you questioning what is going on for most of the runtime because of its stylistic approach. Is the uncle there? How did her father really die? Is India a reliable narrator? Hmm. Mm. It's a slow build of hereditary homicidal tendencies, a bit of weird incestuous shit going on, and a sandcastle murder for the ages! (laughs) (laughs) Has there been another, like, can anyone recall a sandcastle murder anywhere else in the movie? And if not, why not? Well, one, (laughs) one blew up in Nightmare 4, but... It didn't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good recall. Good recall. <laughs> Which is so weird since I was watching that last night. <laughs> the only Craving thing that, that would have made this movie a slight bit better would have been yeah. to see India, single white female, her fucking uncle in the face with the high heels he g- gifted her. Oh, oh that would have mm. been great. Right? Yeah. Like, I was just waiting for it. I was stoned. I was like, please happen. All right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> now, this was a first time watch for me, but I believe it could only go up on rewatches as there is so much to unpack. Sure, there are other movies in this lineup that you could fancy much more, such as a low budget found footage film with a played out story or a sequel to said found footage movie that is not even filmed in the same found footage style that made that first film gain notoriety. God damn. <laughs> Throwing shade at the other movies. <laughs> or finally, a remake worthy of its original director, Wes Craven, that elevates it to the next level. Plus, if you've ever wanted to see Buffalo Bill or Rusty Nail burn the fuck alive, then choose the Hills Have Eyes remake. <laughs> I urge you to choose a film that hasn't been done before. If slow builds, having good and bad traits that make you question where your sanity lies, or incorporating both from your general sausage lineage, then... You get the best of both worlds. Belt killings, creepy uncles, pencil stabbings, and again, as mentioned before, a sandcastle murder. (laughs) If that sounds like your cup of tea, then you definitely need to vote for this film as the best of the bunch. I thank you. Oh my god, I'll tell you right now. Bravo. That's 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 what we need right there. Lacey understood the assignment. Yeah. (laughs) She she did she did the work stoned as well. So (laughs) does make me like at at the moment where she should be least motivated, she has outperformed Ollie's. Um so for shame on Ollie's. Uh let's see, however, if the scores marry up to the review. Um Story, what did you give this movie? Um Lacey. I gave it a motherfucking ten! I'm motherfucking ten. Um, I'm the acting. What did you give this movie? I gave it a fucking ten. I'm motherfucking ten. And the effects. What did you give this movie? Um, there wasn't a whole lot to no, it. There isn't. So, I mean, besides the neck snapping, really, and when she arrows the dude in the face, like that's mm-hmm. about it. So, I give it a seven. You give it a seven, and the soundtrack. What did you give it? I gave it a motherfucking ten. That piano. Oh. <laughs> <Real. laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you give what did you give it for kills 
I mean, the neck snapping alone in the fucking sandcastle murder. A ten. Even though you yeah, don't see it, but like you don't. Need <laughs> like, I mean, it, it does been- do like a like a sand angel on top of he it. He did. Like, it was amazing. Yeah. I loved it. That is damn um, creepy. Boom. Uh-huh. Though. So like, I mean, I'm I'm smiling from ear to ear because it makes me happy to say that out of a maximum fifty points that you could have given this movie, you gave it forty-seven. Yes. Boom. Sir. It's what I'm talking about. Now let's see if anyone dissents to what you've said. Um, let's go first to Bo Ransdell. Anything that you want to either side with or argue against when it comes to Stoker? No, I agree with Lacey 100%. Uh, as someone who has seen it multiple times now, it only gets better. Like mm. Stoker is an elegant movie, and that's what I like most about it. It feels uh, much like the spiders disappearing under dresses in this film. <laughs> Uh, it, it does kind of spin a web. Like it's a really like delicate story that's being told and, and the way that it's revealed to you. I mean, it's just like, it, like Park Chan-wook is one of the greatest living directors. I would agree. Yeah. And this, in my mind is one of his better films. I that doing like, he's doing like about. the quintessential American Southern Gothic movie better than yeah like pretty much anyone in the last like 30 years <laughs> yeah, when i was watching it again today one of the things i was thinking is like this is like reading a good like faulkner short story mm. or something where mm-hmm. um by the end of it you're like well that was fucked up you know <laughs> like that, that and that's what makes southern gothic particularly great is that that morbidity uh and that that melancholy and and it's just beautifully done. Everything from the camera work to the the costuming in this film is incredible. Uh, whether it's the details like uh, Uncle Charlie's sunglasses or her dad's sunglasses or the shoes that she wears, like all of that stuff is meaningful and it's visually interesting. And it's it's just damn near a perfect movie. It's just so goddamn good. Um. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you like you say, if you haven't seen Stoker the fuck are you doing it's one of the great directors of the modern era doing one of his better films so very nice let's talk about your scores then bo rans though let's see if they back up on this one what did you give it for story nine so just one below um what lisi gave it what did you give it for acting 10 i mean every performance in this is nicole kidman is like she is a fucking incredible actress but she is so ridiculously good like in this movie yeah. like see the whole like see the whole monologue about what it's like to have children and mm-hmm. what children are supposed to be and you know you want the best for them but actually she wants her to suffer like she has yeah you gotta wait till like uh, a hereditary to get yeah. another mother speech that's like god damn <laughs> you know uh yeah it's rough uh yep. she's amazing matthew good it, it's his best performance i think yeah he's really good um, and and yeah, and Mia Wasikowska is just yeah, incredible as well. So but, did you ever give see the Braid? Same mark. What? Sorry. Did you ever see Braid? Did yes. we talk about? It? Yeah, 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 yeah. Braid's uh, fucking great, man. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, uh, acting ten, effects eight. You said just one above what uh, Lacey gave it. Soundtrack nine, which is only one below, and then in kills seven. You gave it seven, which means out of the total of 50 that you could have given it, you gave it 43. Uh, JP, thoughts? Yeah, it, it feels like I'm always destined to cover um, Park Chan Wook films because, like, it seems like every year I do something with you, like yeah. from old boy to thirst to thirst again. <laughs> like, yeah, like to put things in context, the other episode you're going to be on, you are representing thirst. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um but i was pretty happy that uh this got paired with my episode on here because i've been a big fan of stoker since it came out and i i also felt like the only person that has seen it back when it came yeah. out duncan it was like weird because it, it was sort of labeled not as like a horror film too mm-hmm. um but you know the horror audience obviously gravitated towards it the the little bit of us that there were um that knew about it um but it's just it's such a beautiful movie and um it's i remember when i found out that uh the director um had done like old boy and and uh some other movies i was like 
I got to check out those movies, which I eventually did. But this was the first film I, I think I'd seen by oh, uh, wow. Chan Park Wook. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's it. I remember when I was first watching it, it, it Lacey did a really good job with her her um, points because for a lot of the movie, you're like, where is this going? You know what I mean? <laughs> and it, it wasn't until the shower scene where I was like, dude, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I was like, wow, mm -hmm. uh, this, this went crazy. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm a big fan of this movie. It's, it's, it's great. Phenomenal. Let's talk about your scoring for it on story. What did you give it? I gave it a nine. Which is the same as Bo, one less than Lacey. On the acting? Nine. Which is uh, one less than Lacey. And the effects? Uh, seven. Which is the same as what Lacey scored at Simtrack? Eight. Which is two lower and kills? Seven. Which but is... honestly, yeah. <laughs> the Sandcastle, like, in my head when I was doing kills, like, I'm just thinking of, like, visually what you see. Like, yeah. I was almost pairing it with effects. But in hindsight... I shouldn't have done that. It should because any a kill just even in your mind can be effective. You know, what it's, I mean? it's such it's such like it's such it's such a vicious kill. Um, but the fact that they added the childlike element of well, he like spit. He took the time to build the sandcastle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After digging the hole. Yeah. <laughs> like just, it's, it's the level. It's the level uh -huh. of precision and detail, which is just you know extra fucked up um cool so yeah you gave it uh, 40 points overall out of 50 uh, mark ball last one talking here had you seen stoker before was this the first time watch? uh this was a first time watch i um, i i had kind of been saving this for for a special occasion i know i know you've been you've been squawking at us about this one for since it came out and yeah. I, I i knew it was gonna be good i don't know why exactly i never got around to this one but uh yeah i i loved this movie i was just absolutely riveted by this thing i had no idea like where it was going exactly um i thought a lot about it. this would make a great double feature with killing of a sacred deer because they're both mm. kind of fucked up families like they're kind of, there's lots of parallels with like greek tragedy and greek myth and double uh, nicole kidman <laughs> and double they nicole kidman, very yeah. white like the color schemes yeah. in the movies are just very bright they're, yeah they're, what, movies. they're generally you, you, just kind of waspy watched... movies they're about fucked yeah. up waspy people <laughs> You've set us up here, though. We cannot progress now until Bo Ranstall gives us his killing of a secret deer. <laughs> oh. Do you want oh. to eat your hair? <laughs> Is that what you want? I'll make you eat your hair. <laughs> My favorite Colin, uh, Colin Farrell? Yeah, Colin, Colin Farrell. Yeah, Colin Farrell. Uh, for a second, I was like, Will Farrell? No, Colin Farrell. Um, <laughs> Will Farrell and killing him sacred deer, bro? Oh, <laughs> that's a movie. Uh, yeah, when he when he threatens to... Did like, we just become make... best friends? <laughs> 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 right, as, the, you know, uh, he's spinning around with a shotgun. Are we best friends now? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mark, continue on, please, before I help uh, myself. Yeah, I, I didn't have way a whole lot to <coughs> a whole lot to add. I, I think you guys kind of covered it pretty well. This, this movie is super good. I definitely think, uh, yeah, between like this Thirst and Old Boy, like Park Chan Wook is fucking one of those directors that like I will always check out anything he's even you know tangentially attached to. But uh, um, yeah, I I scored this one pretty high. I think I scored this higher than anything else on the show. You did really well. We were scoring here um, in line with Lacey's. What did you give it for story? Story, it's a 10. What's this? A motherfucking 10. A motherfucking go, 10. Um, <laughs> acting, you gave it? Acting's a motherfucking 10. A motherfucking 10. Effects, you gave it? Effects, I'm uh, along the same lines. I, yeah, I gave this an 8. Uh, there's not, yep. like, it's, it's not really the point of this thing. This is, this is all about the, the story and the acting. So that's one above what Lacey gave it, but same as what Bo gave it. And um, what did you give it for Simtrack? Uh, soundtrack, I gave this an eight. Uh, like the actual score, I felt like it was used pretty sparingly. Like they're, 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 this movie uses like long gaps of like quiet and silence really effectively to kind of build build atmosphere. So the score does what it's supposed to do. It, it's like kind of just under the surface. But the piano stuff in this movie is fucking phenomenal. Like Jesus Christ, the piano is almost a character in this movie. Mm. So that's two below what Lacey gave it. And then lastly, Kills. 
Uh, kills is an eight. Like, like I said, there's not a whole lot like visually, viscerally going on, but like they're like the the what what the kills are implying and like the build up to them is like I think really effective. And they're they're they're, they're fairly nasty. You see some shit that <laughs> you don't see in a lot of other movies. Sandcastle murder. <laughs> mother, mother, motherfucking sandcastle. <laughs> So that's two below what Lacey gave it. Uh, but second highest score overall for kills. And uh, Mark, out of a possible 50, you gave this movie 44, which means that Lacey Lewis scored this one the highest at 47 points. Um, then Mark at 44. We then went to Bo at 43 and GP at 40, which brings us to our final movie review. Uh, thank you very much, Lacey. You may now step down from... From, and well done, by the way. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I, I'm I'm curious to see now that everyone else has been on this episode with you. If when they come to the next recordings, they pre-prepared speeches. I am um, I'm waiting to see for the change in the dynamic. Uh, but thank you very much, Lacey. Right. Um, the podcast under the stairs calls to uh, the docket for the final movie review. One, Mr. Mark Paul. He's here representing Rick from Wami Balanero. Um, let's give you some detail on this one. Came out in 2007. It was co-directed by Wami and Paco Plaza, uh, who co-wrote with Paco Plaza, as well as Lucio Bordejo. Um, the DP for this one, we mentioned him earlier on, is Pablo Rosso. And um, when it came to score or soundtrack on this one, doesn't have one. So um, there is a song right at the very end, uh, which is a kind of Spanish punk song, which is kind of rad when it kicks in, but I don't think it was officially written for the movie, so it doesn't class as a soundtrack. Um, the movie stars, and I'm not going to fall into the gap with this one, a lot of Spanish people, uh, so let's just skip ahead on that one rather than be mocked by my hosts. <clears throat> The synopsis for this one is a television reporter and cameraman follow emergency workers into a dark apartment building and are quickly locked inside. Something terrifying. Uh, for the trivia for this one, the lead actress, Manuel Velasco, uh, really is actually a TV presenter in Spain. So <laughs> it's why she feels so good at it. Um, they, just, they just went right there as opposed to casting an actor who would then do an inferior job. Uh, the closing passages were really shot in complete darkness using an infrared camera. The actors had no idea what was taking place as they couldn't see a thing. And then lastly, the actors were never given the script in its entirety, so none of them knew um, of their characters' fates. Sometimes not until the day they were actually filming their scenes. This meant that the actors were, more often than not, stressed, nervous and apprehensive on the day of filming. Ideal qualities for the film itself. Uh, Mark Ball, let's hear your either defence of or your condemnation of the movie Rick. Uh, well, I'm certainly not going to condemn this movie. This, this movie was kind of a kind of a game changer when it came out. It's it's hard to imagine 17 years ago this thing came out. Uh, I think uh, the, so. This is yeah, three years after the the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead remake, but I think a mm -hmm. year or two before the Walking Dead TV show had come out. So, like the, this was kind of a, this was a really exciting time to be into horror. Like you know, like there hadn't been like a giant glut of found footage movies. Like there been there been a few here and there, kind of or whatnot. And like there was still enough steam left in the, and I do call this a zombie movie just to keep things simple, kind of. Uh, the, the, this was this was before, yeah. There was a giant glut of zombie movies coming out, like post Walking Dead, basically. Um, I think a lot of people heard about this because of the American remake that came out, which is called <laughs> Quarantine. Yep. Uh, I mean, this is this is before Facebook. Like, like uh, the way you heard about shit like this was either like through just general word of mouth, like you know somebody that's into into everything and like finds out about these things somehow, or like you read about it in like Fangoria or Rue Morgue or something something along those lines. Like, bl bloody disgusting, and websites like that still existed, but uh like the and there's there's nothing wrong with the remake of this i think it's kind of unnecessary it's a little bit longer it's it's english language other than that they're pretty much almost the same goddamn movie except for i think wreck is a lot better personally it's a lot more raw like it almost like especially at the time it doesn't feel like a movie like the the, the found footage is such a i think important aspect of this like it really it, it, it does what that style is supposed to do. It really puts you into the into the movie like you feel like you are a character like right alongside them. Um, uh, I, I really like the, the this this 
I, I also consider this not really a traditional like three act movie. This has the first half, which is all of our setup. And then this movie just fucking pops off and mm. in the last half and never really lets up. Like um, we, we get kind of like a, a our, our finale up in the attic or whatnot. But um, yeah, this I, this benefits from, from its runtime a lot, I think, just because of how this the story kind of plays out. Um, I, 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 this movie also kind of made me a little nostalgic about my days working for a television station and I, when mm. I was a photographer and I would go out with reporters kind of like this. I, I think it makes perfect sense that our protagonist in this actually was like a, you know, reporter slash newscaster or whatnot. Cause like, I, I remember going out to shoots like this where you go to the firehouse or whatnot and it's all there, you know, your reporter hopefully has like a very bubbly kind of personality and everything's like fun and games. But when shit starts popping off, like these people take their jobs really fucking seriously a lot of the time. And like, I think uh, uh, that that's that's portrayed in this movie, like, like really, really accurately kind of. I've, I've, <laughs> I've worked with people just like these people kind of so. Um yeah, I don't know what else to say. I, I I I dig this movie a lot. Like if uh if you're even remotely interested in found footage movies, I think this definitely needs to be on like your 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 watch list. Uh I think this is one of the stronger zombie movies of the of the 2000s also. So, uh if either of those things are your game, this you, you should have seen this by now or should check it out in the future. Very nice, smart ball. Right, let's talk about your scoring of the movie. In story, what did you give it? Uh, I gave I gave this a seven. It's a, there's yep. not way a lot. It's it's not a super complicated story, but it doesn't really need to be. It's kind of a setup and go. And the acting, what did you give it? So acting is a weird thing to gauge with a movie that's not spoken in your your native tongue. Like, obviously, I can't really comment on, like, any of the line delivery. Like, I, for all I know, like, these, you know, it could be, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, true, so, yeah. I'm the same, like, there's, there's certain things where it's usually, I found that, like, when I was first getting into, like, Asian horror, there's just a whole lot of delivery in the way that actors perform, which is just culturally weird. Yeah. To how I'm used to seeing it in the West. And as a result, you kind of have to acclimate to that before you know if it's good or not. So kind of, yeah, what I gauged for the, for the purposes of this is like kind of like their, their levels of intensity, like, and you know, like their, their ability to kind of just stay in the scene. I, I think is great. Like the, the, this movie, the last half of this thing is pure chaos and like they, the, they, they're acting like it, you know, <laughs> it's, it's very believable. And effects. What did you give it? I give this a seven. There's not not a ton of effects work in this. What there is 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 pretty consistent. There's a couple a couple zombie makeups that are maybe not so great, but the found footage hides it pretty well. So, all right. So the next one is interesting because I I put sim track, but really, and I've had to clarify this um, with JP this morning and with, with Lacey. Like when I see sim track, I'm really talking about simmed. Uh, just the audio in general for yeah, movies that doesn't act, yeah when it doesn't have a soundtrack it's kind of what what else is going on uh, what did you give it for that uh so yeah with the, with the absence of music i guess i gave this a seven because the sound design is it's, it's the same as the acting when when it's like quiet and kind of chill when it needs to be it is and when shit is absolute fucking chaos like it it, it is but you can still like hear what's going on and hear you know mm-hmm. like it, it's 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 a really difficult thing to do audio for a movie like that i think where yeah. yeah it's just it could just be a fucking wall of noise basically uh so yeah i, I gave it i give this a seven this, this movie has a good sound if it this is when you want to turn up real loud when you're watching at home um, and lastly in kills uh kills i give this a six kind of same as the makeup like there's not like, a lot of the kills are off screen like they're 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 effective but like visually there's not way like a whole lot going on that's kind of, that's kind of the point of this like it leaves a lot to your imagination kind of and it's it's worse in your head than what their budget probably would have allowed for one thing but also like it's it's just a different way of doing it i think so yeah i give it a six Right, so out of a maximum 50 points, you gave this movie 35. I'm going to turn it over to uh, the other hosts here who will be cognizant of everything that you've picked apart in their reviews um, and will be returning it full force right at your face, right at your face, Mark. Um, starting with the very mean-spirited Bo Ransdell. Uh, <laughs> Bo, um, comments, observations, uh, declarations of war against Mark's review? Yeah, I, I really agree with 
pretty much everything he said. I think one of the th things that's interesting to listen to is Lacey's reaction on seeing this, not to preview, but based on what she said so far about Rick Four, um, that is seeing this now is very different. I, and I, th I think I've told this story a number of times, so I'll make this quick, but I remember hearing about this movie, like Mark suggested, you know, through like a, a website forum mm. that I liked that was like no 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 you know like when you're a horror fan you're like i need the i need the raw uncut stuff and the, and somebody was like no no this is the real shit like this is this is a, like legit scary and i was like well i gotta see it then so i imported a spanish dvd hmm. of wreck before it ever released in the states and uh and fortunately it had an english uh subtrack on it but yeah, so I saw it well ahead of a lot of people I knew, but had heard of the the movie. And then I saw it, and it blew my fucking mind. But, like like Mark suggested, that was pre-glut of found footage. It was pre-glut of that kind of fast-style zombie. It was really different. It did, it did a lot of environmental storytelling that was really interesting. It felt authentic. As he said, the last half of it is just this constant, like, pulse-pounding finale. And when I loaned it to a friend of mine, uh, I remember her saying, like, I needed it to be over. By the time it ended, <laughs> like, I was, I, was, I was so physically, like, tense and worn out. I, j I needed it to end when it did because I couldn't I couldn't take much more. Yeah, I and remember like I like my I've told this story umpteen times as well, but um, I saw this wait like so I saw this before like remakes and all the rest. I saw this in a small like independent art house cinema um, as part of the Edinburgh Film Festival on its run. So that would have been circa two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, and I knew nothing about it out with spanish horror movie and i had already seen movies like the others and like, like i was i was i liked the vibe of spanish horror movies in that they were ghostly and gothic and like weirdly had optimistic death endings but i was like that that's what i went in to watch and about half an hour into this movie i was just like i don't like i totally sunk into my chair i was like i don't get like what were doing here like at all even a little bit and then that body like hit the <laughs> the the guy falls Splat. off the, the balcony and like i instantly for the rest of the movie was in a cold sweat just going i don't know what's happening i don't know what's going on and i was i was it's one of the few movies that has like genuinely terrified me in the cinema like to the point where i just i did not i hadn't seen anything like it anything that i would describe as it is basically like a roller coaster ride, like where the first half an hour is going up and up and up, and then once you lip over that top, um, everything after it was just like a thrill ride. But like you said, it was before. Like the the nearest thing that came to this that I had seen was something like Blair Witch, <laughs> like where I was like, oh, it's found footage. Um, like like you never, there wasn't a huge amount of those movies between you know ninety nine and two thousand and seven. And then literally after 2007, it was like every third movie was a found footage movie. So it's a weird experience seeing it. Like going back now, every time since has been kind of like, a, oh yeah, right. So everyone does this now. Yeah, yeah. And and that's why I think Lacey's reaction to it <laughs> is totally reasonable. Mm. And it also informs my reaction of like, I, I wonder how much of my good feelings towards wreck are the fact that it was so new and it and because it was the real shit like they weren't lying it scared me when i saw it and i always chase that yeah and and yeah so uh i still love it i still think it's great i don't of all the movies we've talked about i still don't think it's the best on the list but i think it's awfully goddamn close oh right let's uh, see if the scores wear out on that one then what did you give it for story I gave it a um, hold on. I gotta find Rex. Sorry, uh, a seven on story. which is the same as what Mark gave it. What did you uh, give it for acting? Uh, I gave it an eight. I think Angela Vidal is great. Yeah, it's the same as what Mark gave it. Um, for the effects, uh, nine, which is too above what Mark gave it for the soundtrack slash sound. I gave it a seven because it's the soundtracks you don't play. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's the same as what Mark gave it. And then lastly, what did you give it for kills? An eight. Eight, which is two above what Mark gave it. Thank you very much, Bo Ransdell. JP, the floor is yours. Yeah, Wreck, the original Wreck, pretty phenomenal movie. Uh, probably going to uh, rehash a few things that you guys said, but uh, I I do think that the time period that this film came out um, is important for a few reasons to put that in perspective. Um, so you had Blair Witch, which was w one of the first like commercially successful found footage films, mm -hmm. but surprisingly it did not kick off a bunch of ripped rip off and imitators surprisingly like there were some but usually you would see like a, a crazy amount so if you go from 1999 to 2007 there really isn't any good found footage films mm -hmm. you know what i mean and this year 2007 we got wreck and as well as paranormal activity which i think is great as well um same goes for like infected zombie films uh, you were getting some zombie films out there, but they were very low budget and kind of bad after uh, 2004's Dawn of the Dead remake. Um, at the time, I thought this film was, I think this film is incredibly original, even though this style of movie and the subject matter might be a little bit played out by today's standards. If you actually put in perspective when it came out, it, it was pretty original and, and very unique. Um, I remember uh, this film being talked about and, and it's so nostalgic what you guys like sort of reminiscing about when you saw this movie and stuff like that because uh it was a t point in horror where the video stores were kind of gone but we didn't have the crazy internet streaming ability that we have now so we were in this weird sort of cross section uh where where really dvd was like the key whether you were importing from from spain or, or, or uh, bit parenting yeah right <laughs> so you were uh it, it was a lot of word of mouth or if fangoria was writing about it or bloody disgusting was posting about it and this was a film that was very underground at the time and horror in general was very underground at this point i think horror is as mainstream now as it's ever been in, mm -hmm. in the history of it right but films like this you didn't people didn't see this movie when it came out unless you were really into horror right the general person didn't see this movie um that just kind of liked horror movies so you had to like seek out this stuff so when you finally did seek out a film like this and you got it and you watched it late at night one night it, it really kind of did blow your mind sometimes with, with these movies and this movie in particular is super scary i think that's the the key factor to what i like about this movie especially in the end and i do think that films like quarantine although i don't think it's like a bad movie mm -hmm. uh I, I actually like it um i i think that it kind of hurt uh this movie in a way because a lot of people have seen that movie before this one um and i, I think that it, it kind of uh it kind of softens everything in quarantine. It, it Hollywood fies it a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. even though they're very similar. Uh, this movie is like very raw and it, it's so simple and the pacing is incredible, right? It's only like an hour and 15 minutes mm -hmm. and it starts out with this just late night, like interview this reporter who probably wants to do like bigger stories, but it's just like stuck in these like overnight stories with like a fire department like it, she probably didn't expect much to happen but hoped for it and then all of a sudden she's thrust into this insane situation and i think what really uh blew my mind about this movie too was the 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 sort of like twist in what's happening right because you expect infection right but mm -hmm. it you know spoiler alert a little bit it's actually religious you, and, and i thought that was incredible um when I first seen it, because I just never, I never expected, never thought that 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 was even in play, and it really kind of changes the way you see the movie a little bit, and uh, especially with the continuation of um, the second film. But yeah, I, I think this movie is is great all around. Um, it's probably my favorite of the bunch, honestly. Um, it's just super effective. Very nice. Um, lastly, I mean, I feel like we've all set up Lacey here for comments. So, um, do I Lacey, do my scores? Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. I've, like, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't do your scores, JP. <laughs> I fucking dare you. This is my show, and you will go scoreless. <laughs> of course, you can. Um, what did you give it for story? Uh, nine. 
So that is a whole, wait for that, a whole two above what Mark gave it. And would you give it for acting? Nine. And also to speak on acting, I do know what you mean about like, if you're not native to the language, it mm. is a little harder to judge acting. However, all I do is recommend that you watch a movie that has really bad acting that <laughs> is in a foreign language. And you'll be like, okay, I totally can see the good from the bad, even if I don't speak the language. But there is still a little bit of disconnect there with <laughs> like, the sense. way things are. But I've watched a couple really bad foreign films and the acting is like feels like very bad american acting <laughs> or so you, english acting. Uh, <laughs> so you give a for acting you give a nine, nine. nine. yep and so that's one above what mar gave it effects uh 8.5 primarily for the the final scene because mm. that shit is terrifying yeah that's a that's a pretty great end end of movie creature why's it got the hammer y'all why's it got the hammer yeah why is it got a hammer why why Why? yeah um so that is a 1.5 above what mar gave it and a 0.5 below what bo gave it um soundtrack slash sound yeah so at first i gave it uh nothing because i was like (laughs) i don't know what to say but um if you were talking like actual like sound design outside of uh you know music specifically it's actually really good it, especially if you watch it while thinking about that there's tons of noises throughout the movie and um a lot of uh you know creaking and stomping running up steps and and different sound like it, it is filled with uh different sound design that, mm-hmm. that's actually really good so i'd probably say eight you give it an eight which is one above what mark gave it and lastly kills uh, also an eight, even though that you don't really see kills, it's more the the idea behind them. Like the, when they first go up to the apartment, and the lady's just standing there in the dark, like in her mm. nightgown, and when she first attacks, and even the little girl when she first attacks, it is shocking. Even though it's not like a kill, like a slasher kill or something, it's effective. Very nice, right? So um, no, no, yeah. Uh, so that's an eight. So that's two above what Mark gave it. Uh, it's the same what Bo gave it. Um, and now that I have contractually obligated your scores, um, I'm going to hand that across to Lacey, who's had tons of setup and a false setup. Um, Lacey, um, anything that you want to lean in on from what has been said? No, no, I'm just kidding. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that would be the greatest thing ever. Nope, uh, you're fine. Thanks. Uh, see you. Um, um, yeah, you guys are also nice and kind with. Um you know, of the time of when it came out. But for me, honestly, I don't give a fuck. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which is which blows my mind because of all the people on this call, the one that I associate most with, like, nostalgia and feelings of what, well, you know, I just... Is lazy. Is lazy. <laughs> Like, like, I'm saying, all the it only applies when she was there for the time period. <laughs> no, like, no, like my rating like goes for that. But like, honestly, yeah. it doesn't matter with for me personally. Mm. It doesn't matter when this movie. It's a first. Out. Yeah, this is a first time watch for you. Twenty twenty four. Yeah, I had seen Quarantine. Um, oh, right. So um, I had seen that, and that movie pissed me off to no fucking <laughs> end when that came out because. Um, at the time that that came out, like I didn't even know it was a remake, you know. Mm. So a lot of um, people, most didn't, people did not. Yeah. So, um, but what pissed me off about that remake was the fact that I was an avid Dexter watcher. Yeah. And they <laughs> casted freaking Deb, dude. <laughs> they fucking casted Jennifer Carpenter, who just it's so me. hard to not see her as Deb. <laughs> right, and the Exorcism of Emily Rose. Like, come the yes. fuck on, you guys. Like what are you doing? Like, this is supposed to be a found footage movie. Why are you casting a well-known? Like, cause I feel like found footage should like stick to that. And if they want to keep like that real feel, you know, so it right. just pissed me off totally to no end. So, like, well, I will say quarantine wins over when like Jennifer Gardner is the terrifying. Jennifer streamer. Gardner. Carpenter. <laughs> Not Gardner, a Carpenter, sorry. <laughs> Jennifer Gardner as well. Terrifying screamer. Um, both of them. Uh, now Jennifer Carpenter's scream is like better <laughs> like see when like, she's in the dark she's hyperventilating that yeah thing. she's she's good it's just tough because yeah, you just she's so well known yeah it's like when you watch um what was the name of that fucking bastard what's the name of that movie the last exorcism 
Yeah. 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 All right. They're like, yeah, found footage movie. You're like that. I know these actors. <laughs> like, well, like, I don't care. Oh, I yeah. actually really like the last exorcism, though. So, so do I. I. But it's so like, like, like that. This is this is <laughs> like when you. Put, I, I like it as a movie. I just like as soon as they're like that. This really happened. I'm like, no, it fucking didn't. Um, even yeah, more like, so. Like I'm more lenient with something like that over that because like that interests me more than. I also didn't know we were like avid dexter fans either lacy we need to speak about this whole well it, it's it's super bomby too because dexter was like this it came out in 2006 yes. so it was like she was so in everybody's head it just yeah, is weird up, that, yeah. that she was on there yeah so it just like i i didn't like it then i don't like it now it's just not my like it's just not my shit um you know um i thought the premise like the initial setup is like really good and then when we get into you know the the place i just i watched this at 6 30 in the morning that time just what <laughs> no wonder you didn't fucking love it <laughs> and i was so it's fucking enjoyed. Time. Like, and i had like the worst day after that after watching this movie too i was like <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Like I'm so all wreck. at work and all I could hear is just these fucking screams like <laughs> were I literally in Spanish for no reason yes um, and like this is the one you should drink a fucking weed drink with <laughs> <laughs> like, melted on the couch oh man like I, I was just I, I was just over it and like I, I was like it was and it's the shortest runtime of all these movies, but it felt mm -hmm. the fucking longest. No. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Holy fuck. Like, You're hurting my heart. Good. I hope I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have to endure watching this fucking movie. Like, it's just not my, it, it's not my jam, you guys. Like, I respect yeah. you guys that you like it, but fuck this movie. There we, well, the, to be honest, you're not like, people are now worried. Your scores don't reflect fuck this movie, so <laughs> let's... Did you give it all motherfucking tens? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's not, there's no motherfucking ten here, but like they're not horrific, so uh, let's go story. Oh, hang on. I gotta pull it back up. <laughs> Sorry, where's my mail? It's so good. There we go. All right. Where the fuck is this stupid movie? <laughs> all right. Spain. <laughs> that was clever, though. All right, uh, I gave it an eight because, like I said, the premise is good. It just annoyed me. Yeah, well, you scored it higher than Mark um, and higher than Bo. Um, what did you give the acting? Um, because I don't know any of these people. Like, I don't know if they can act. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I gave it a seven. <laughs> Which is only one below Mark. Um, and effects, what did you give it? Like, I couldn't really see what the fuck was going on at 630 in the goddamn morning. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I give it a fucking five. You give it a five. That's only two below Mark. Um, sim track slash sound. Well, since I only had to go off of sound, like it was fine until the screaming started. I, I, I would, I would have given this a zero if I possibly could have, but um, I, I gave it a very generous two. You give it a two. Holy shit! And, and then and kills. What did you give it? This did not have a sandcastle murder. <laughs> Oh, it didn't. So, so um, and it, it was just like kind of run of the mill, what you would see like in any of these other type of movies. So I gave it a, a five for being mediocre. You gave it a five, uh, which means your overall score out of 50, you gave this 27. Um, Generous. <laughs> which means oh, very much like JP said, he was a high scorer on this one. He gave it 42 and a half out of 50. The low scorer being Lacey, who gave it 27. Um, and second highest score was Bo Ransdell with 39. And at the bottom with uh, 35, just above Lacey, is Mark Ball. Um, right, that is us. We've we've done our we've done our hard work here. Um, now we get to do the fun bit, because I've, I've tabulated all these in together to give total score counts. And the results may not surprise you, or may surprise you, I don't know. Um, so let's run through in order here. Um, out of a maximum of 200 points, The Hills Have Eyes scored 167. For the movie Wreck 4, out of a maximum of 200 points, the movie scored 140. Um, out of a maximum of 200 points, the movie Stoker scored 174. Damn! Um, and Wreck, 
out of a maximum of 200 points, only scoring 3.5 above rank 4, um, got 143.5, which means if we do a list from top to bottom, in first place, Stoker. In second place, The Hills Have Eyes. In third place, Rec. And in bottom place, Rec 4. Which shocked me, because when I originally did this list, um, I thought to myself, uh, Rec is going to run away with this. Uh, Stoker's going to come in second, I hope. Um, Hills of Eyes likely will come in third place. And in fourth place, there will be a Rec 4, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, let me just feed you into a little bit of what I did while you guys were doing this. Because I also watched the movies and I scored them myself. And uh, my results may or may not surprise you. Um, they certainly surprised me because I scored the Hills Have Eyes totally 38 out of 50. Um, I scored Rec 4 32 out of 50. I scored Stoker 47 out of 50. And I scored Rec 36 out of 50, which actually means, weirdly, um, I scored these in the order that they came in in the final score. I scored the Hills Have Eyes above Rec, which had you asked me, um, just in general, what movie I actually like more. I like Rec more than I like the Hills Have Eyes, but when you break it down into those categories and force me to score them at a 10... It's the damn soundtrack that kills it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Add my scores into it, there would be zero change at all. Stoker would be at the top. Uh, Hills of Eyes would still be in second place. Rec would still be in third place, marginally above Rec 4. So, believe it or not, collectively as a group, we're not that far off each other. There's no controversy here. Everyone on the same page. No massive arguments. Yeah, maybe we didn't all lean on the same things. But as episodes go, surprisingly tight. Uh, there was no like my favorite movie was the bottom movie how dare you <laughs> yeah i think that i would have been fine with any of the the three outside of rec four being the, yeah. the best one because <laughs> they i think i like them all like that they're all great all three of them you, your scoring is very tight between so you got 42 and a half for rec uh 42 for the hills of eyes and 40 for stoker so there isn't yeah, really very that much close <laughs> Yeah, very, very, very close. Um, so there you go, ladies and gents. Just as a recap and a reminder, the top place for this episode was Park Chan Wook's Stoker. And second place was Alexander Aja's The Hills Have Eyes remake. Um, and third place was Whammy Ballero's Wreck. And in fourth place was Whammy Ballero's Wreck. Four. A huge thanks to my hosts, Bo Ransdell, JP, Lazy Lou, and Mark Ball. All these hosts will be joining on the other episode. Sadly, not all together, but they will be uh, facing off, uh, more than likely stealing Lacey's format, um, <laughs> on other shows to put the rest of them at shame. Oh yeah, this is how we did it on episode one. Um, <laughs> Until they drop and then everyone realise that Lacey set the tone. Um, thank you very much for checking out this very first inaugural horror head-to-head. -head. Uh, we will be back with the next instalment in about a week's time. And yeah, there's five in this series. And guess what? We're doing these every single quarter. There will be another horror head-to-head. -head. So if these hosts have been here before, they will be somewhere on an upcoming season as well. Lastly, all that is left for me to say is um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I know it's not summer series like you wanted it, but it's something a little bit different to get you through. So wherever you are, wherever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan McLeish Broadcasting live from under the stairs. And I and my co-hosts are signing off. <laughs>